Well, it's six o'clock, so we'll call the meeting of the neighbor Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet to order. <coughs> First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We got it in sync. So, so this is Chad Pelichek with the city of Sheboygan. I think we're going to try to do a roll call. So if you can, we'll call your name from the screen in front of us. And if you can say uh, who you are and which neighborhood you are representing. So we'll start with the people that are in the council chambers. Go ahead. Peter Shalama, Indiana <coughs> Corridor. Israel Deutsch, the South Side Beat Officer. Uh, Kevin Post, uh, the North Side Beat Cop. And I'm Chad Pelishek with the City of Sheboygan Planning Department. So and, let's. And Mayor Vandersteen. So let's start with Sherry. Sherry Thielen, Franklin Park. Betty. <laughs> Betty Ackley, can you hear us? I can. Sorry, I was having problems with my mic. This is Betty Ackley. I'm representing Maple Heights. Jason. Jason Malaziola, Streets and Sanitation. Abby. Hi, I'm Abby Block uh, from King Park. Thomas. Give him all Give them all of that. Keith. Jax. Email. Give that to the email too. Keith Jax. Can I just ask, can people mic? Yeah, can we? We have a number of people that have their mics not muted. Can you please mute your mic until you're ready to speak? So go ahead, Keith Jax. Yeah, Keith Jax, uh, next door. Rochelle? Rochelle Ross, Franklin Park. I think it's Coonert. Go ahead. Beth, maybe? Okay. Starting the next row, Bill Young. Okay, Bill Young, I think your memorial. Uh, Elaine Jax. Uh, yes, I'm with Gateway. With Gateway, okay. Joseph. Yeah, Joe Clark with uh, Near North. Chris. Chris. Moving on, Cal. Cal. Sorry, I think we had both of you. Can you repeat it, Cal? I'm sorry, uh, Cal Sacco, Vara, North Point. And going back to Chris. Chris Domodowski, please. Oh. Todd. Todd. Todd Wolf, City Administrator. Mary. Mary Dotson Park. Adam. Um, Adam Rifle, Kinney Park. Scott. Carol Wagner. Actually, I'm using Scott's computer uh, from Ellis' store. Nancy. Nancy Maring, City Planning. Jody. <clears throat> Jody, can you unmute? <clears throat> we'll move on. We'll come back to you, Dean. 
Dean Decker, Indiana Corridor, also uh, alder person for the 6th District. Roberta? Roberta Felicki Paneski, uh, Volrath North Point, and alder person for District 2 and four neighborhoods. Thank you. Chief Demogowski, we are, did we already get you or not? I believe so. Okay. Alder Donahue? If you can just state your name and district. Everyone. I'm Marilyn Donahue. I'm in the Near North neighborhood and the Alder for District 3. Happy to be here. Thank you. Lisa? <clears throat> Okay, that didn't work. Kristen? Christine? Christine, yeah. sorry. Yeah, so I'm um, the secretary at the Kings Park Neighborhood Association. Glad to be here. Thank you. Going back to Lisa Salgado, can you hear us? Okay, well, we... I. Jody Kramer, you look like you're ready to talk now. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Can you just state your name? I'm here. <laughs> your name and your Jody neighborhood. Jody Kramer. <laughs> Jody Kramer Memorial. Thank you. We appreciate that. And also in the council chambers. Did you hear me? We did. So now you can mute it. We're good. Okay. <laughs> so just a reminder okay. if every. I don't know how. If everybody can, re everybody can mute your line so we don't hear any background noise. And uh, Janet, who was on the screen, is now, Janet Duman from the City Planning is now in the council chamber. So I'll turn it back over to Mayor Vandersteen. Thank you very much, Chad. Next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from our July 21st meeting. I'd entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I have a motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. Is there any uh, additions or corrections to those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those minutes are passed. Thank you. Uh, next item is our feature presentation. Build friendships, safety, and belonging through valuable neighborhood gatherings. Kim Leipom from Lakeland University is our presenter today. Welcome, Kim. Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. I appreciate uh, being here with all of you today. Uh, I will let you know off the bat because there are many of you and it might be difficult for you to ask a question or share a thought or a comment that you have <clears throat> as efficiently as if we were in person. So I do have the chat open. You are welcome to use the chat function if you know how, and I will monitor that and I will do my best to uh, address any questions or make sure that we document any comments that you'd like to share as we're going along the, the conversation. As Mayor Vandersteen said, my name is Kim Leipon. I work with Lakeland University and I also own an event and meeting planning business called EventWise, which I have operated in the Sheboygan area for about uh, 17 or 18 years now. And um, I, I've had the opportunity to work with Abby um, when she was with a previous employer. And, and I appreciate being here to talk with you all today because I'm a resident of Sheboygan County, uh, the city of Sheboygan. I grew up here. I chose to live here and raise my children here, and I love being a part of my neighborhood. So what we're gonna talk about today, and, and I understand we have about 20 minutes um, to talk and maybe about 10 minutes for questions, so 30 minutes all together. But we're really gonna talk about why all of you are involved with your neighborhood. Why was it important to you? Why is it important for the rest of the neighborhood to build a bond, build a relationship, just even get to know each other. And it's, it's my understanding that there might be some frustrations with having activities or events planned in your neighborhood and then not having 
um, the turnout or the attendance for those events that, that you would like. And that's something that we're gonna talk about today as well. But before we start talking about events, you know, I mean, I plan events for a living and the last thing I wanna do is have an event that I know may not be successful or well attended or maybe the mission or the goal um, wasn't clearly defined or met the needs of, of the audience. So the very first thing that I really want to talk about is you belong to your neighborhood association for a particular reason. But that reason might be different than the person who lives down the block or the person who lives at the other end of your neighborhood association area. And that's something to understand about your neighborhood. Everybody is going to approach being a part of a neighborhood from a different perspective and from a different need. So first and foremost, before trying to do too many things that are formal in nature, an activity or a gathering or event, I really suggest that you take up a campaign to get to know the neighbors that are in your association. And that's a huge effort in and of itself. Um, you know, there are simple things that you can do. Now, if I'm not mistaken, everybody should have um, a handout that was given to you. So I am not gonna read the handout because if I read the handout, you would not need me. So I am gonna talk, yeah, yep, that's the one, thank you. So I will talk um, big picture and let you all share some of your thoughts as well. So get to know your neighbors. Something as simple as waving when you drive by with a smile on your face. It makes you feel like that person belongs in your neighborhood. We all know when there are people in our neighborhood that don't look familiar or look like maybe they don't belong there. So let's be friendly and break, break down that barrier with a smile or a wave. You know, I really, I, I recommend doing things that, um, that, that don't seem like gatherings. You know, how can you get to know your neighbors by offering to lend a helping hand? Maybe you see uh, a neighbor a couple blocks down that's trying to put up his or her Christmas decorations or Halloween decorations. Lend a helping hand or at least stop and say, hey, those decorations look really great. My name's Kim. I just live three blocks over. That's simple and it's non-threatening and it opens the door for conversation because you can't get to know your neighbors if you're not conversing with your neighbors. And you can't find out what your neighbors may want to do from a social standpoint or even from the standpoint of how can your neighborhood be helpful to each other if you don't have a means of communication. So there are lots of ways that you can communicate. Face-to-face -face communication is great. In this day right now, as we all know, that, that's a little challenging. So we have to be a little more inventive. Think about, um, you know, sorry, Marilyn, but we all have yard signs, you know, in our yard. And let's upcycle them when this election is over. Flip it over right on the yard sign. Hey, all, welcome to my neighborhood. Tell them your name. Say, hey, I'm going to have coffee on my front porch next week. Come and join me. Introduce yourself. It doesn't cost a thing, and it just might add a little goodwill to your neighborhood. Um, when, when COVID started, my daughter's a nurse, and um, so I put a, put a prayer tree um, out in my front yard, and I had a note that said, with a bunch of pieces of paper, and I said, leave somebody's name, and I, I promise, to, promise to pray for that person. Every single solitary night, my tree was filled. I had to take notes down because there were so many. And it was just a way to make the people that were walking in my neighborhood feel like they belonged there. And I loved that. So what little things can you do in your neighborhood to put a smile on somebody else's face? Just make your house feel more welcoming, even if you're not physically there. You know, I love, um, he posted that... Um, he, he asked if anyone was doing a, a Christmas decorating contest. I love that idea. I love the idea of anything little or small that you can do to, to bring cheer or bring a smile to the outside of your house. And, and remember, that's also an opportunity for you to open up the channels of communication. 
by walking through your neighborhood as people are outside decorating and introduce yourself and find out how long they've lived in the neighborhood. Do they need help with anything? So communication is key and that's the verbal communication is, is my first recommendation. But there are a lot of other ways to communicate and lots of other ways that people receive information. So is there anybody in your neighborhood, perhaps outside of yourself, that um, is really savvy when it comes to the computer? Might somebody be able to start a Facebook uh, neighborhood group? Might somebody even be able to set up a simple website where you can share information about what's going on in your neighborhood? Uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you use um, Nextdoor, and I, I recognize a lot of uh, the neighborhoods that were just announced because they come through my feed as well. Think about asking somebody to regularly make posts in that uh, app about what's going on in your neighborhood. Even something like, hey, we're going to have a, a Christmas decorating contest. Everybody make sure your house is decorated and ready to go by December 1st. And let's all walk around on December 2nd and appreciate everybody's hard work. Something simple like that. It's, it's not threatening. It's an easy way to let people engage in a way that makes them comfortable. Um, Abby had a comment. Yeah, I love that idea. You know, if you can really do a contest, it would be great to select a winner and, hey, share that information with the city because they are also here to help promote your neighborhood and the great things that are happening in Sheboygan. And they don't know about something spectacular that your neighborhood is doing. They can't let everybody else know. And you're all resources for each other. Does anybody have uh, any other suggestions about ways that you have tried to get to know your neighborhood? Maybe you've divided and conquered because your neighborhood is so big. Um, you know, you can't do it all, but if you've got several people that are at different points in your neighborhood association geographically, um, maybe you can kind of divide and conquer and really get to know the people that are in your neighborhood. Does anybody else have any suggestions that you'd like to share that are not um, written on the information that was shared? Is there anyone here from the M M Park neighborhood? They have been holding coffees on the corner. Love it. Mm -hmm. I think that is a great idea. Play in your front yard. Enjoy a cup of coffee or a glass of wine in the evening before it gets too dark on, on, you know, on your front porch. Um, or even just put a lawn chair in your front yard. It's a nice way just to be welcoming. I love that idea. This is Mary from the End Park neighborhood. And one of the things that I realized is that we had a lot of people come to coffee on the corner that could not attend the neighborhood meetings. Sure. So we met different people. And it got cold, and everybody, the people that were attending the meetings were asking if we could do it every week. So it was kind of fun. That's good. And that's wonderful that that worked for your neighborhood, Mary. You found something that brought people together naturally because you know what? I am the last person in the world that wants to go to another meeting. But, you know, you frame it up under, hey, we're having coffee on the corner, and that turns into something where you're like, I really like these people. I, I, I want to get together and talk with them about what's going on in my neighborhood. The meeting doesn't sound so awful anymore. I love that idea. Well, I was sure to put no agenda and no <laughs> discussion, just coffee. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> it's meeting each other. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good thing to do. I like it. It is. And you know, Mary, even those two little things that you just said, no agenda, it, it, and, it, and, you know, no, it doesn't have to be formal. Politics. <laughs> yeah, that's, I politics. think that's important. I think that's really important because, you know, human nature is that somebody has an agenda. So I love the idea that you just put that out there and broke down that barrier. Thank you. Mm hmm Anyone else have suggestions that they'd like to share? Okay, well, thanks. Um, certainly take a look at the, um, the ideas that are on the list under step one and see if any of them might work for your neighborhood or 
maybe you can adapt something different. It's kind of about throwing all the ideas out there and seeing what sticks for your neighborhood. And remember, what might work for one person might not work for somebody else. So certainly multiple modes um, and methods of communication will probably bring you the best amount of success. Okay, so let's talk about those events and those activities that you try so hard to plan and then you're the only one that has showed up. Okay, so the, it's frustrating and I empathize with you, I truly do. <laughs> So let's talk about some things. You know, I think Mary really started off um, with an excellent idea. She did something that wasn't threatening. It was something that people do every day. They drink coffee or they drink tea or they, they have a little sip of something and it, it brings people together. We all know the food and beverage bring people together. But, but what other kind of things could you do that are um, a little less structured or less organized to start out with that will, again, break down that barrier and show people that you're interested in them as a person and them as a neighbor, and you're interested in the safety and the health of your neighborhood. Uh, I, I really think that um, the decorating contests are great and are fun. Uh, our neighborhood does that, but we do it informally. And uh, one of the things that, that we do is we have, um, we have an interesting neighborhood. We have a number of single people in our neighborhood, but yet we have a number of new young families. Our whole neighborhood is like changed over. I'm now the old one in the neighborhood. Goodness gracious. But you know, like I don't, I, I need help. I only have two hands. And it's great because one year when I was putting up my Christmas decorations, a neighbor came over and said, can I help you? You have tried four times to put that same side up of your, uh, of your swag and it keeps falling down. And yes, that would be really great. And, and now that prompted us to put together a list of people in the neighborhood who are resources and can help. I know that Ron down the neighbor, down the block, he's got the huge big ladder that I need to reach the second floor of my house. And Julie on the end of the neighborhood, she always comes over to help me with my life. Said, you know, who can help us? And, and what skills do you have that you might be willing to share? And honestly, we put a list together. And I actually, I'm the keeper of the list in our neighborhood. So, you know, I have everybody's names and I have their emails and their phone numbers and how they would like to help um, others in our neighborhood. So when the neighbor across the street just had a baby, I sent out an email to the people who said, I want to bake for people who are in need. So I sent out a message and let them know that the neighbors across the street had a baby and this might be a nice time to bring over a hot meal or some some cookies or some banana bread. And that was, you know, that's the way that they like to contribute to the neighborhood. So sometimes an event doesn't have to be something so formal that engages a lot of people. It, it can be smaller activities. Yeah, Todd, neighbors waking leaves. Actually, you know what I want? I want the neighbor who's got the blower because I don't have the blower either. That's the valuable neighbor in the neighborhood. Walk around with your blower. You know, that, but that's exactly right. It's, it's kind of opening your eyes to see what somebody else might be able to value or benefit from that, that you could help with. And making leaves is a great way to, again, build a bond, talk to somebody. Hey, what do you love about our neighborhood? What don't you like about our neighborhood? What could we what could we do to engage you more in the neighborhood? That's the time to ask the questions so that you can then create that larger activity or event that um, brings more people to the neighborhood. You know, I think Todd making pizza for your neighborhood could be a prize for the Christmas decorating contest. <laughs> So you want to share some, anybody want to share other ideas that, um, that you've had to bring people together in your neighborhood? This is Scott. Can anybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Scott. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to get online with my laptop, but uh, one of the things that we did for our neighborhood was we purchased uh, have a heart traps. We purchased three have a heart traps that we offer to anyone in the neighborhood that wants to borrow them to to use to uh, catch rabbits, squirrels, 
squirrels or whatever they might need to move from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But I think the other point brought was a very good one, that maybe the other thing we should purchase is a leaf blower that we as a neighborhood <laughs> group would loan to anyone who wants that, wants to use it for a period of time. Sure. I think those are really nice ideas, and particularly if um, your neighborhood has the resources to do something like that, that's great. Then again, remember, it's a matter of communicating that to the rest of the neighborhood so people know where they can go to borrow or um, use equipment that they may not have. So it's great if you have it, not so great if you don't communicate it out across the neighborhood. Or you know what? Again, the holidays are coming up. Maybe you are a handy person. It doesn't have to cost very much money. Do little notes or cards and walk around your neighborhood on a lovely autumn day and pass notes um, you know, in people's doors. It's, oh my gosh, it's not a political campaign note. They might actually smile and read it. And this is a good time to do that kind of a thing. Um, and, and again, it's a way for you to introduce yourself and share the resources that, um, that you have available for people to find out how to engage with others in your neighborhood. Any other ideas? Uh, this is Mary. I just wanted to say that it's, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. We met so many people from the neighborhood during our dumpster day. Yeah. People that did not really realize that they had this owed to them and because we worked to become an association. So it was very nice and people have shown an interest because they had been given something. Now there's an in, a higher interest from people in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. so my, mm -hmm. And one of the other things that I have concerns with is we have a lot of older people in this neighborhood. Uh, people that I think are very lonely, and I am hoping to get some suggestions as to how we could, could uh, connect with those people and perhaps offer company. Um, you know, with coronavirus, it, it's kind of tough because they really don't want people in their house or knocking on their door. But, right. but I do know that there are people in this neighborhood that could use some help. Does anyone have suggestions for Mary about how she can? Anybody have any suggestions, Guy? Adam, Robert, Mary, Adam, Nora, I don't You know, Mary, is there, could you? Yeah, a phone campaign is definitely a very good idea if you have people's uh, phone numbers. But if you don't, again, could you put a sign in one of those people's front yard that's large that they might be able to see it enough? To, to just tell them you're thinking about them and um, offer help. And I, you know, it's the communication back and forth that you need to know what people are going to be comfortable doing. But maybe the note says, I'm gonna knock on your door tomorrow at one o'clock so I can find out how I can help you or just so I can say hello to you. But it might be a way to visually get their attention in lieu of going to their door first. Other okay. suggestions? That's a good idea. I have, we have, we have some new neighbors um, that just moved in and they're all from out of the city of Sheboygan and they're all about my age, which is kind of fun. Uh, what we did <laughs> is we shared communication information with each other. Uh, so, in case there's a problem, they have somebody in the neighborhood to call. And perhaps we could um, build on that by going to different neighbors and saying, would you like to join us in this? I, I agree with that completely. Because and these women are all alone. All mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. and, and they want that safety. I, you know, I would think that they probably would feel very welcomed and um, have a sense of belonging and safety that that is necessary. It's always necessary, but it's definitely necessary right now in this time. And, you know, Becky brings up a, a really good suggestion how she just went and introduced herself and 
when you tell people or perhaps you have something formal that shows you're a part of your neighborhood association, that also creates trust. You're not just telling them something that um, you think maybe they want to hear. You're showing them we are a part of a neighborhood association that is sponsored or sanctioned by the city of Sheboygan, and we have resources to help you. Here's a phone number to call so that we can share more information with you when you're ready. I, I think that is, um, I think that's a really nice thing to do to show trust with someone who's new in your neighborhood. I have an idea. Yes, yeah, oh. please. Uh, this is John, John Ogden from Gateway. Um, joined a little late. Sorry about that. Um, last year, I started kind of a coffee club, just kind of a general for the city. You know, if you want to meet new people, come on out. We're going to have coffee at, I think the first time was uh, on 8th, 8th Avenue. I can't even remember the place. Um, <laughs> tells you how good my memory is right now. But paradigm, you know, paradigm. Thank you. And you know, the turnout was fairly well. And then we had, you know, we tried to do it once a month, but obviously Corona got in our way and kind of uh, brought a halt to all that. But I was thinking that today that you know we could do that just even individually, neighborhood wise. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and have coffee somewhere. Yes, you absolutely could. It's a good idea. And and that's you know, what it takes to build to build that sense of community and neighborhood. Todd just made a really good point. Uh, and actually, we all have something new going on in our neighborhoods with uh, the advent of our new garbage collection system. Get to, you know, your neighbors who might need help in wintertime, not just with snow blowing or snow removal, but even with those containers. They can be difficult to maneuver if you are someone who is not as sure-footed as, as somebody else. So maybe take note of that. Take, take note of who may need um, assistance in your neighborhood from that perspective either. That is very, very simple. Thank you, Mary Lynn, for joining us. Nice to see you. Since our time um, is, is just about coming to a close, I just want to make sure that I bring a couple of things to your attention. Um, of course, Abby and the other um, team members at the city are more than capable of helping you with, with any thoughts or ideas that you have, but we just kind of wanted to make sure that you knew you were supported and maybe share some new ideas with you or validate the things that you're already doing are really good ideas and you should really keep doing them. So we, we put together a checklist for you of um, sort of best practices to think about when you do hold an activity. Granted, all activities are different and would have their own separate checklist, but there are some that have um, some commonalities to them that, that you might wanna think about. Certainly, when you're going to do something, make sure that you tell people about it. Again, that communication part is key. We're visual people. So think about taking photos, whether it's of the outside of somebody's house for their decorations or a gathering that you have, and post them on social media or keep them and save them for something that you do later to promote your neighborhood gatherings. But I will caution you. If you're going to take pictures in general, please make sure that you get people's permission to do so. Um, not everybody likes to have their photo taken, and lots of people also do not like somebody else posting their photo on social media. So please make sure that you um, are kind and asking, because nothing could undo all the great work that you have done than by taking a picture of somebody and posting it on social media, and that is the last thing in the world they want. They are no longer going to engage with you. Um, make sure people are welcomed and that they're thanked when they come and when they go. I don't care how small or large your gathering is, everybody wants to feel that their time was appreciated and valued, and it's very simple to do. Um, just a couple of takeaways, because uh, I don't, I don't want to go over our time, but I just, want, I just want to make sure that you all know that your neighborhoods are different and your approaches are going to be different. What works for Mary may not work for Elaine uh, and may not work for Nancy. So 
but that doesn't mean that you can't share ideas and resources because somebody might have gotten a little twist on Mary's idea of her corner coffees that might work for their neighborhood. So please make sure you share with each other. Um, I do believe that cohesive neighborhoods are only going to flourish if we can do so by creating face-to-face -face relationships and trust. And that does take time. I appreciate the fact that that takes time, particularly if you have a large geographical um, area in your, in your neighborhood. Please take action. You can't think somebody else is going to do it. We do have to take action ourselves, which will hopefully inspire others to take action and, and be involved. Um, and, you know, I just want to thank you for the, the work and the time that you're putting into your neighborhoods because um, it's really valued. It really is. And we want Sheboygan to be a place where we want to stay and we want to be proud of our community and the work that we're doing to build strong and healthy neighborhoods is a very large reason why Sheboygan will remain vibrant and a safe and wonderful place for us to be as young people as well as um, as well as adults uh, into our older ages that want to be here and settle here and stay here because we know we can get we can get help and we can be a part of something so thank you for your time um, if you have any questions, we're certainly welcome for you to put them in the chat. I'm sure that um, Abby is probably monitoring the chat as well. Kim, thank you so much for your presentation. We really appreciate the ideas on getting to know our neighbors better and building community. So thank you so much. Thanks, Mayor. Next, we'll go on to a uh, discussion and presentation of the Neighborhood Resource Packet by Nancy Marine and Janet Duhlman. when it's on? Okay. I'm Janet Dolman from Planning Department and I'm going to go through the resource packet, a portion of it, and then Nancy will take over from where I left off. Um, you should have received a yellow folder in your bag that was dropped off on your porch. So for the first tab, this just has a bunch of neighborhood information. It has the contact list for your neighborhood associations. And then on the second, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on the second page is a plan on a page. This just kind of gives you information of how to do your neighborhood plans. On the next page is next door information, which it sounds like all of you are very familiar with next door. But here's just kind of an informational sheet on next door. Then the next sheet is um, what Keeney Park did for their large item disposal day. And um, we're gonna have Abby discuss it as to what um, Keeney Park did for their um, large item disposal. Abby? Thanks, Janet. Um, so we're a very new neighborhood association, had our first dumpster day uh, at the beginning of October. And uh, the board, went out and did door-to-door -door, um, leafleting. Um, but as you see, really we're trying to, as I guess all of the neighborhood associations are, trying to figure out the best way to get people to gather in the same place and build that sense of community. So put a survey on the back um, and then the three of us chipped in and uh, got some gift certificates from the neighborhood and did a drawing at our next meeting. But I thought it was really interesting I was a little surprised by a couple of the things that we learned. So we had uh, 29 people respond and turn their surveys in. And the four people with the longest uh, time in the neighborhood had almost uh, 200 years uh, in the neighborhood between the four of them. Um, I was surprised that out of the 29, only seven were registered on next door. So if that is our primary means of communicating with neighbors, we're really missing you know, a pretty big segment of the community. Um, and just how people responded about what would encourage them to attend a meeting or a gathering. And that overwhelmingly was less formal, more social. Um, 23 out of 29 said that. Uh, 16 said they want to share a meal, um, whether that's at a restaurant or a potluck style. Um, but I, yeah, it was a good way to 
learn a little bit more about our neighbors and reach people that we wanted to valorize got in contact with and we had a good turnout that day so thank you okay and then for the second tab there's um, some information called neighborhood projects there's a bunch of different ideas that um, our intern actually put together um, of ideas that you and your neighborhood association can um, do in your neighborhoods. So, and then Nancy. Thanks, Janet. And just a quick note, um, in those yellow folders, if you open it up and if you guys didn't notice, um, the handout for Kim's presentation is in that flap as you open that folder. So if you want to look back on anything Kim, Kim talked about and use that checklist that she put together, that's in that folder as well. <clears throat> as we look onto the third tab, we see this is more city information. Um, so we see city speakers. A lot of you take advantage of asking city staff to come to your neighborhood association meetings and talk about what's going on in the city. And we are always happy to um, accommodate that. And here's just a list of city staff and sort of what they're available to talk about. And of course, you can always reach out to us if you don't see someone on here and there's a topic you're interested in. The next page, you'll see some DPW and some planning department contact information. And after that, you'll see instructions on interactive maps access. We have a GIS technician in our um, Department of Public Works who's worked really hard to put a lot of, of maps together for the city. So there's tons of information available online on these maps. And if you turn the page over, you'll see kind of a list of things you can find on those interactive maps. So I encourage you all to sort of play with those tools. After that, you will see instructions here on how to find who your neighborhood officers are on the PD's website. Those do change, or they could change every year, so it might be worth checking up on. After that, you'll see links to the different departmental reports. Every year, um, each department in the city puts together an annual report, and you can see the link to the DPW annual report, the PD annual report, and then the link to the admin page, which contains a lot of reports, some of which are interesting and some um, are very long. And uh, <laughs> the next page you'll see uh, the city development abbreviated annual report. Our annual report was sort of long. So I took out the pages that I thought would be most interesting to you all as neighborhood associations and I put them in the binder. But if you're interested in seeing the full report, you can go to that link that's on the front cover there. The next tab is city neighborhood support. So really the, the Department of Public Works is a great partner for our neighborhood association. A couple of the programs that they run are, is the adopt a trail and adopt a park program. And we have a number of neighborhoods that have taken them up on this um, and others that are talking about it. So you can read about that program there. There's also the neighborhood large item disposal program, which I believe all of our neighborhoods uh, participated in this past year. The Planning and Development Department, of which Abby, Janet, and I are a part, um, we offer a hot dog program and flyer printing. So we'll give you hot dogs once a year, each of your neighborhood associations, for a neighborhood block party, and the cops will come and grill them for you. Um, the, and then we'll, we also offer flyer printing. And honestly, if you, anything else you might need help with or need some support on, we really encourage you to reach out to us because we're here to support you and we want to see you successful. If you turn that page over, we offer neighborhood planning support. These plans belong to you guys as neighborhood associations, but we are here as resources to help you compile those plans. And MNLC neighborhood mini grants, special project support, and neighborhood mapping. So the next uh, few pages are examples of those things, the hot dog request instructions, the adopt a park and adopt a trail application and the MNLC mini grant application are stuck in there so you can see what might be involved in both of those processes. And then finally, we have a couple of neighborhood maps that we put together. One of them is a map of all of the neighborhoods that currently have associations. So you can see where your neighborhoods are and where the other neighborhood associa associations are in the city. The other map is our neighborhood district map. 
So we do have a few aldermen with us tonight. Um, you can see where your neighborhood lies in which district. You can go online to find your aldermen and how to contact them. Um, and then you can see what other neighborhoods share your district and might share your aldermen. So that is it for the resource packet, and I will turn it over to our city administrator, Todd Wolf, to say a couple of words. All right, thanks, Nancy. Uh, one thing I would like to point out is I think we need to add uh, the, a list of all of the elders and their contact information. I didn't see it unless I missed it. Um, I think the, easy, the more we can get them involved with our neighborhood associations, the better. Um, so thank you, everybody. One of the things that I would love to uh, just compliment everybody because you guys are leaders in our, in, our, in our city because you guys have moved forward and really helped foster and bring neighborhood associations together. And you guys need to be complimented tremendously because that is how we, start, how we continue and start to make the city a better place not just for ourselves, but for our children and for people that are visiting Sheboygan. And the neighborhood associations are, are very important and we compliment everybody. Um, and even this morning on WHBL, I, um, yesterday in, in council, we uh, introduced the Kini Court. So again, congratulations in uh, joining the group. and. It's very important that we get people to get these neighborhood associations working together, working with the city, working with each other. Unfortunately, typically when a neighborhood association has started, it's because of the negative and we really need to focus on the positive. We have so much to offer um, our community and new neighbors and people that are visiting our community. So thank you again. And if you ever need anything, um, I can get you Nancy Maring's number <laughs> <laughs> or Abby <laughs> or any of the other team members. But thank you again. And um, again, hats off to you guys for doing a great job. We have so many new uh, neighborhood associations. It's, it's really, really exciting. Thank you. Well, thank you very much to the staff for putting that uh, packet together and for the presentation on it. Uh, next item uh, we're going to move along to is the large item disposal program results, and we'll turn it over to Jason Blasiola for that. Jason? Jason, you have to unmute. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. No, I didn't realize I didn't, I didn't I don't have the numbers in front of me um I didn't get my packet but all the neighborhood uh did participate uh, we had about 30 tons total that we did collect in both the dumpsters and the garbage truck so it was a pretty good successful turnout this year good well thank you very much Next, we'll move on to uh, Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride update. Travis Gross, I understand uh, you might have a report for us in this area. Please unmute. There you go. My apologies, I stepped away for a moment. My dog was having uh, some fits. <laughs> um, so I, I missed the comments, I'm sorry. Uh, we were just looking for a report on Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride. We understand you might have some information for us. Oh, uh, yeah, we've been meeting regularly out at Taylor Park um, and uh, just trying to continue on uh, working with some new neighborhoods. Uh, I've been personally trying to get Cleveland Park uh, uh, to start meeting regularly. However, with COVID, it's kind of an issue um, finding places to meet that aren't uh, outside. Um, so going into the cold weather days, we might have some issues there. Um, and I know Penny's been working with a couple other neighborhoods uh, and uh, just keep moving along, really. Well, thank you very much for that information. You know, Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride has played a huge role in bringing all of you together to, to be a part of this. We appreciate all the work that they've put into incubating all these different neighborhoods that are part of our neighborhood association today. 
Uh, next, we'll move on to uh, a roundtable discussion. Uh, Chad, did you want to give any introduction on that? I, I'm not sure if the group has any further information that they'd want to share. I just want to comment that we will, uh, to City Administrator Wolf's comments, we will get the uh, Alderman listing emailed out to you guys tomorrow so you can line it up with your, um, with the map and we will, we've seen a glitch in, in some listing of some contact information so watch for some updated pages as it relates to the contact information coming your way to include everybody that should have been included. So with that, if there is any further discussion on uh, any kind of round table, um, idea sharing, anything as it relates to concerns or opportunities or anything in the neighborhoods, now is the time for anybody to share that with us, with the group. Otherwise, um, you know, we'll be on our way. But we thank everybody for joining us today. And, and we're just looking if anybody has anything that they want to share out to the larger group. Chad? Yes? Oops, Chad? Yeah, this is Todd. Um, just to help Jason out, um, as far as the tonnage for the uh, garbage um, pickup, uh, I just wanted to kind of give everybody a, an idea. In 2019, we had 23.07 tons. And in 2020, again, you know, here we are in COVID, we actually had 30.06 tons. So we're, we're pulling a lot of stuff out of our neighborhoods, uh, cleaning things up. So, you know, compliments to everybody, help, neighbors helping neighbors and, you know, communicating it out there. It's a great resource to help, to help keep our, our neighbors, uh, neighborhoods clean and organized. And it's amazing. I know how many neighborhood associations I've been to where how many mattresses are collected during this time. It's, it's amazing, but uh, 30 tons is a lot. So if you wanted to pass that on, thank you. Thank you, Todd. Um, I have something to add. Go ahead. Um, one of the neighborhoods said that what they were doing is they were creating a, like a welcome pack for, um, I guess, for new neighbors, just the resources. And I, I don't know all that was in it, but I thought that was a nice idea to, especially for the lady who was talking about having a lot of new neighbors. If the association created a welcome pack, that would be awesome, I thought. Very good idea, thank you. We did that already at one point. I'd like to add something. Mention it. Go um, ahead. The Franklin Park, Franklin Park Association, uh, the Flats and King Park Association are working with the Sheboygan Police Department on the making the grade clothing collection um, from now through November 6th. Um, if you want to get the word out, there is one, uh, one drop off place that I know of because we set it up is at St. Peter Claver Parish on South 12th Street. People can just come in with new clothes purchased um, for the kids at Longfellow. Um, the school that probably needs the most help a lot of the time. And it was, you know, if kids feel good about themselves, their grades are better in school. So it's a, a clothing drive that'll benefit the kids at Longfellow. That's great. Thank you for letting us know about that. Anybody else? Um, I have a question. Have a... Next door. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Mary. Ms. Mary should go. Okay. Um, when you say that you're going to, first of all, there's a couple things. When you say you're going to do welcome bags to new neighbors, the End Park neighborhood has also been talking about that. But one of the things where I'm stuck and maybe somebody has the answer, how do you know when people leave your neighborhood and when people come in come, and new people come in? It's kind of a difficult, I, I get these notices on Nextdoor that says verify that this is your new neighbor. Well, I don't know where that neighbor is. It's just a name. And when people leave, I know that they themselves can remove themselves from receiving the ne the end park neighborhood or whatever neighborhood it is information. But as a lead on next door, leads are expected to keep that up to date. I have no idea how to do that. 
the only thing that I can say is we have a realtor that lives in our neighborhood and she told me that she's going to get me a website that will tell me when people, when houses are sold. And I guess that's one clue, but you know, there's renters also that may be moving out. So I'm, I'm looking for suggestions because I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to keep it valid on the next door website. Well, so thanks. if I can speak to that for just a sec, the, the Nextdoor website is unfortunately sort of a third-party website that city staff can't really um, help with very much. If, if this, it might be worth sending a note to the, to the Nextdoor administrators, and you can do that with their help button to see if they have any suggestions for you as far as keeping up-to-date on Nextdoor goes. But something that you could do as a neighbor if you're trying to understand um, who might need a welcome packet is maybe to get block captains for your areas and be responsible to just keep an eye on a couple of blocks to see if you notice anyone moving in or moving out rather than trying to keep an eye on it in the entire neighborhood. I think King Park is a good example. They've had block captains for a long time. And so everybody sort of takes a street and keeps an eye on what's going on there. Thanks for we those suggestions. Well we talk about that in our However, um, End Park is kind of a, and I'm sure it's the same in every neighborhood, but when we have the people on A Street, it's like they live in a totally different world than the people that live on Los Angeles Avenue. Um, it's totally different situations. We finally got a person to join our meeting. He is from A Street. And he's been very verbal about what's happening on A Street. A lot of speeding, a lot of, you know, he's got a lot of issues about A Street. And sometimes it's hard to understand what those people are going through when you live on a street where it's perfectly quiet. So it's a little, it, so we've been trying to get a representative from every street. We have not been very successful. As an example, we have nobody that comes to our meetings from 9th Street. We have nobody from 10th Street. It's mostly neighbors around the park. And we've done flyers. I Every time um, Nextdoor gives me invitations that I can send out, it's usually 100 at a time. I go back and I resend the Nextdoor invitations just trying to get information about the people that live on those streets. But you know, there's so much confidentiality and it's kind of hard to find out who people live in an entire neighborhood without voluntarily stepping forward. Okay, thanks, Mary. Dean, did you have your uh, microphone on? Yes. Um, I just had a couple quick comments about it. What, what, uh, <clears throat> Our, some of the things that we've been doing with our neighborhood, um, we did have um, what was kind of successful was the we had a meeting this last uh, end of September, and um, it was uh, Israel Deutsch kind of uh, suggested it to us, and it worked out kind of nice. Uh, we had a, a mid-block meeting. We had it actually in the uh, uh, the old gas station lot. Um, we had we, we, we had our hot dogs left over from our cleanup, which because of the the cleanup um, was on a rainy Saturday, which wasn't which wasn't uh, great. But uh, we uh, we had those left over, so we decided to fry those up at that time. And we actually got quite a few neighbors stopping by because we're right on Indiana Avenue there. And um, I just um, I think it's something that we're going to pursue in the in the future. Um, try to move it around the neighborhood, go on different uh, corners and possibly have a similar thing. Maybe not, maybe have um, hot dogs, but maybe get to have like ice cream or have something like that uh, as a treat and see, see what we can do for, our, for uh, attracting people to, to those kind of things. We're, uh, like I said, it'll have to wait until, until next spring when it's, the weather's nicer, but um, just a suggestion to some of the other groups. Thank you, Dean. Uh, Bill Young, did you have a comment? J 
John, you have your microphone on. Did you have a comment? Uh, John Ogden, yeah, from Gateway. I do have a, I, I, I have a question, I guess. Um, I thought a year or so ago I was entering into near north, and I swear I saw a sign underneath one of the street signs that said, welcome to near north or your near north neighborhood welcomes you or something similar. Is that something that's possibly available to us? that we could put at different entry points into our neighborhood. Nancy, would you comment on that? Yeah, um, Near North did that sign project as actually their city mini grant project a few years ago. So in that resource binder, you'll see um, that mini grant application. That's what Near North used to put those signs up in their neighborhood. One of their goals in their neighborhood plan was to have more awareness, just that Near North exists and it has a name and here we are and these are our borders. So the sign project is what they did. Um, so not only did they have a few street signs on the perimeter of their neighborhood, they also printed some yard signs and gave them away to whoever wanted a yard sign and all, it's a really simple yard sign that's brightly colored that has their you know, near North neighbor logo on it. And it says near North neighbor. And, and so you, if you walk through that neighborhood, you'll see quite a few of those signs out in people's front yards. I don't know if Joe has anything to add to that. Uh, I don't other than that we're roughly proud of those signs. And thanks Nancy for helping us figure it all out. Thank you. Uh, Bill Young, again, you have your your microphone on. Did you have a comment? He hasn't muted. Chad, you want to say something? I just want to follow up to the comments that Nancy made to just say that the city does have a sign shop and those signs were printed in house. So if we can work with neighborhoods to uh, fund those and use resources that we have here, it, it's very cost effective. So if there is neighbors that are neighborhoods that are thinking of wanting to kind of uh, reproduce that in their neighborhood, we have the uh, resources to be able to do that with our sign shop at the Department of Public Works. Thank you, Chad. Any other comments or questions? When you said um, resources for signs, does that mean that there's an expense to the neighborhood? So let me speak to that a little bit. It's, although we used the city sign shop to create those signs, Near North did go through that grant application process. So there was not a cost to the neighborhood. Actually, the match, that you'll see a sheet in that grant application that talks about a neighborhood match. But what we're looking for is really volunteer time. It could be a monetary match, but Near North used a volunteer time that's valued at, I think, 15 dollars an hour as their match so they put in a little bit of sweat equity into the project and we covered the cost and the financial burden of the project so there was not i mean there is a partnership for sure to get those projects done um but there wasn't a financial cost to the neighborhood are you talking about the yard sign or the street sign or yep. both? both that was part all part of one project Okay, I guess what I'm asking is for the neighborhood signs, because if the city would print them, we, and Park will do it. I'm sure that yeah. all of my board would do you, that. Yeah, go through that neighborhood. It's part of that neighborhood grant process. So we can talk about that. I, I believe Janet goes to your meeting. And so mm -hmm. if that's something you're interested in, I think she can, she can work through that grant process to get those um, <coughs> signs done for you. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I have one other question, please. When you, the person that was talking about the clothing drive for Longfellow School, are there sizes, size recommendations? Yeah, I'm sorry, I should have said that. They're looking for size six to eight and 10 to 12. And this is all new clothing. And that, and you're just talking about like not shoes or anything, just clothing. No, they're they're basically looking for pants, sweatshirts, t-shirts, that type of thing. Okay, thank you. So I believe there's a flyer associated with that um, 
making the grade event. And we could include that flyer on a follow-up email to this group if any of you are interested in contributing to that project. Any other comments? We heard from one older person. We've got one more out there. Roberta Flicky Paneski, would you like to make any comments? You're not you're not you're muted yet. Sorry. I have been to at least one of each of the um, neighborhood meetings in my district. And I will tell you, each of them has a very different flavor. Uh, they engage differently. They choose different projects. Uh, they run their meetings differently. Um, and each of them are very effective. Uh, I happen to be in the Memorial neighborhood and they are talking about changing their name because Memorial Hospital in a few years won't be in that neighborhood. So um, they are obviously very engaged with um, that particular neighborhood. Uh, the other thing that occurred to me when I heard about the clothing for uh, Longfellow, uh, the what used to be um, the Grant School neighborhood that has a different name, um, that neighborhood adopts a Grant School family every year and they, they put together a Christmas present package and they, they use the recommendations from grant school itself. So um, they're, they're well on their way doing that. But um, there is a great deal of enthusiasm with all of these neighborhoods and um, we're gonna have to get really creative and maybe learn a few more tech Zoom things because um, everybody was meeting outside, everybody was meeting in a park and it's, getting pretty cold out there, folks. So um, I'm hoping that the groups can stick together for the winter. That's it, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, John, did you have another comment? I think he's just on the phone. Okay. So I just wanna, this is uh, Chad. Yeah. No, I'm good, thank you. This is Chad, I just wanna make some closing remarks and then I think Nancy's got her mic off so she's probably wants it too but I what I want to say is that um, you know we we understand we would have loved to do this party in person we had hoped to uh, do this at Kiwanis Park to celebrate the successes that all of you have made for us throughout the year and, and obviously the pandemic uh, kind of put a damper to that so we're hoping that those of you that ordered food your food was delivered in the neighborhood dog didn't eat it before you got it um, if you're on the phone and you have not received the yellow folder for some reason please reach out to us because we will be happy to uh, provide that after the meeting and the last thing i want to say to uh, alder uh, flicky paneski's comments is we we have a beautiful city hall with very large rooms and the you know the you can social distance particularly in the council chamber so if there is a need i know it's not in your neighborhood but if there is a need to have neighborhood meetings uh, in a place where you can social distance, we can work through um, access to the building after hours to host those meetings here. So uh, please reach out to the staff if that's, a, if that's something you need to take up because we don't wanna see the pandemic separate us and, and give us challenges as well as we also have a city go-to meeting account and a Zoom account that if, you know, if it need to be done, the neighbors are more than willing to, we're, we're more than willing to uh, organize those so you can do virtual meetings so there is opportunities to meet through the winter and um, you know I would just encourage anybody to reach out to the staff and myself if you need uh, further assistance Nancy so just to echo Chad's comments thank you all so much for being here and being uh, participating in your neighborhoods it's terrific to see this tonight um, as a quick follow-up, we look for an email from uh, probably Janet, who's been sending the reminder emails about this meeting. We'll put together, you know, that aldermanic list um, and any updated resource materials uh, that we think might be useful. We can include that clothing drive information. And we're also going to put together a survey as a follow-up to this meeting, really to get at how we as staff can best serve 
you all as our neighborhood associations, if you all need any support that we're not giving and, and how we can maybe improve that relationship. So keep an eye on that and please respond when you get it. Thank you again. It's great to see all of you here tonight. And I'd like to thank the staff for putting a great uh, agenda together for us tonight and sending us a great meal with some really yummy cookies. It was great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, with that, I'd accept the motion to adjourn. So move this is Chad. I have motion. Do we have a motion and a second? All in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 And we'll, aye. And we'll uh, be looking to see you on hey, January. Nancy, I have one quick question. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, Dean. This is Dean. Uh, I just noticed on our map, uh, the Indiana corridor is uh, expanded a little bit. Is that was that is that is that correct? Uh, it shows us it shows the Parkview Terrace uh, um, apartments now included in our neighborhood. Is that a misprint or is that how that's been been has that been added to us? Because we used to end at 25th Street. Right. So the map that we have, the original boundaries have you all, ha including that apartment complex. But we need to chat about that because the police don't include you. So whatever your official boundaries are, I can change this map to reflect that. The original boundaries that we have of all the neighborhoods show Indiana Corridor as that shape. So if you don't, if you don't include that, I'm happy to make that change. Well, we, we haven't in the past. That's not saying that we wouldn't want to. We, we, we have never included them in the past. When Penny set us up and ori originally we, we, we originally ended, ended with the two circles on 25th Street off of Georgia Avenue, and that was the end of our thing. But um, if that needs to be, I, I don't know if it necessarily, you know, we, just so in the future, then we would start, like we would do flyers and things like that to them and invite some of the people that are at the Parkview Terrace already. So, um, yeah, let's chat about that, Dean. I, I'll, I'll pop okay. into your next meeting. Okay, sounds good. Well, I'd like to wish everybody happy holidays ahead, and our next meeting will be January 5th. Have a great evening. Thank you.